going to be talking about the differences between a no lie relaxer and a lie relaxer. Now, if you follow me, if you are a subscriber, which you should be, you know that I am stretching my hair for six months and now that six month stretch is officially over with and I'm so excited, but I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to relax my hair with, whether I'm going to go lie or no lie, relax at home, relax at a salon. Like, I'm debating and I do not know what to do. So, I wanted to make this video and share with you guys the differences, the benefits, the downsides of no lie and lie relaxer. Because it's really important to know what the heck is going in our hair, you know? So, um, to start off, the main chemical differences between no lie and lie is that no lie is either made up of lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, or guanidine hydroxide, okay? And no lie relaxers tend to have a much lower pH compared to its opponent, the lie relaxer, which has a pH ranging between 12 and 14. And the reason why the pH is so high is because it's pretty much made up of sodium hydroxide, which is really, really strong. And anytime we're putting something with a high pH between 12 and 14 in our hair, the our hair cuticles are going to tend to lift up, like raise, and that can lead to external damage. And I'm going to talk to you guys later on in the video on how to combat that. So you guys have to like don't have to worry about that too much, okay? So um to start off, first I'm going to talk about no lie, the benefits, the downsides, and then I'm going to go ahead and go into lie relaxers, the benefits and the downsides, and then you're going to decide who takes the cake, which one is better for you. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so we are back. Um, now we're going to go ahead and talk about no lie. The benefits, the downsides, okay? So who uses no lie relaxers? People with fine hair, people who have like sensitive scalp, people who like at home relaxers, and people who like to relax their children's hair, which is something I really don't recommend, okay? So um, the benefits, what's the good thing about no lie relaxer? Number one, it's good on your scalp. You won't have to experience too much burning or too much harshness from the chemical, from the relaxer, because of the low pH, because of what it's made up of. So, number one, it's good on your scalp. It's not so harsh on your scalp. Number two, if you like bone straight hair, if you like straight hair when you relax your hair, you will obtain much straighter results using a no lie relaxer. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, um, being that the pH is so low, like I listed earlier, your cuticles, your hair cuticles aren't going to lift so much. Therefore, you won't have to worry about external damage too much because of that low pH, okay? So that's number three. Number four is it's cheap. Getting a no lie at home relaxer box kit is what? Ranges between four to seven dollars. It's really not that expensive because you get your shampoo, your conditioner, your relaxer, your gloves. So it's really cheap, okay? Now, the downside of the no lie relaxer is that, um, Wow. Okay. Being that your hair is so straight, being that your hair, you know, it gives you straighter results, you might tend to have limp hair or lifeless like hair or stick hair. Your hair won't be as flowy. You know, it'll be so stiff because it's so straight, if that makes any sense. So that's one bad thing about no lie relaxer. The second bad thing is the fact that even though it's good on your scalp, it's not good on your hair because of the fact that no lie tends to leave little mineral deposits in your hair. They just leave little mineral deposits throughout your hair. And what those mineral deposits do is it blocks moisture from getting into your hair. Okay? So you might have a hard time with obtaining moisture and retaining that moisture because of those mineral deposits. Okay, so as you know, ethnic hair, any hair in general, moisture is very important, especially if you have ethnic hair. Thick hair, you need moisture. It's key to healthy hair. So, I mean, to combat that, if you really like no lie and you want to continue to use that to combat the mineral deposits, I would seriously recommend using a chelating shampoo. Okay, so what that pretty much does is it cleanses the hair of the little mineral deposits. So you don't have to worry about you know, dryness or, you know, retaining moisture so much because it'll pretty much take all the mineral deposits out, okay? And of course, you know, to maintain healthy hair care when you are relaxing, always make sure that before you even relax, make sure that you put either a conditioner oil, oil, or, um, or an oil, which I prefer, oil, olive oil, whatever type of oil on your already relaxed 
last hair just to protect that hair so that it doesn't get damaged or over processed okay so that's pretty much the benefits and the downside of a no lie relaxer so stay tuned for live okay guys so we're back with lie relaxers so first of all who uses lie relaxers um professional stylists use it on their clients People with coarse hair use lie relaxers, and people who just don't want foam straight results, you know? So, the benefits of a lie relaxer. First of all, it is much better on your hair because it does not leave the little mineral deposits that no lie tend to leave on our hair. Therefore, it will leave your hair feeling much softer, much silkier. You won't have a problem with retaining or obtaining moisture because those mineral deposits are not there. So, it's much better for your hair. You know, um, another good thing is the fact that you can use it over and over again. If you buy a tub, like for example, I use Mazzani Butter Blend, um, which I'm not sure if I'm going to use it this time, but I'll give you that to date. But my last relaxer, I've used Mazzani Butter Blends, okay? And if I wanted to, if, if I decide to use this again, I have at least two more applications left in here. So I just keep this in my cabinet because I can reuse this over and over again. So in a way, you can save money because it's not like a one-time thing, you know? If you get like a tub, this is like a 30-ounce tub. So I can use this in total like maybe three or four times. But I'm probably going to make this into two applications if I decide to use this when I relax. Of course, I will keep you guys updated on that. So that's pretty much the benefits of a lot of relaxer. Now, to go to the downside of a lot of relaxer, um... Live relaxers are very harsh on your scalp, okay? They can burn the crap out of your scalp if you do not base properly, okay? Why is that? Because of that high pH, 12 to 14 range. It is not good on your scalp. It can burn like heck. Um, also, like I discussed earlier in the beginning of the video, live relaxers, because of the high pH, they tend to lift and raise your hair cuticles. That's not good because external damage can get into the hair's fiber, you know, the core of your hair strand, and that can lead to damage, okay? So, how do you combat that? Pretty much um, using a protein treatment. Now, I cannot stress this enough. If you decide to use a live relaxer, immediately after taking out the relaxer, before you even neutralize, do a protein treatment, okay? Because what that protein treatment will do, it will build up your hair, okay? The structure of your hair, put back the important protein that the lye took out. Because once you put that stuff on your hair, the lye relaxer, sodium hydroxide in your hair, it's taking, it's, in a way, it's breaking down your hair, okay? So immediately, guys, immediately after taking out a lye relaxer, before you neutralize, put a protein treatment. I like Apogee um, Two Minute Reconstructor. Like I put that in my hair for about two, three minutes, rinse that out, and then I go ahead and neutralize, condition, and go about my whole relaxer day. So please, make sure you do, you, um, you use a protein treatment after you, after you rinse the relaxer out and before you neutralize. It's very important because you want to build your hair back up, okay? Um, what else? Oh yeah, also, because of it being so harsh on your scalp, when you're using a lie relaxer, and also when you're even using a no lie relaxer, make sure that you properly base your scalp with a petroleum-based cream or Vaseline, you know? Um, put Vaseline around your edges, your nape, your ears, your scalp, just to protect your skin. Because this is, these, I mean, these are straight up chemicals. You do not want to burn your skin. So please, Prepare properly, okay, when you are relaxing. It's so important. And of course, when you already have relaxed hair, make sure you oil or condition or put conditioner on your scalp to protect your already relaxed hair to I mean to reduce damage or um, reduce over processing. Okay? So that's very, very important. Okay? So that's pretty much everything. That's all I have. <laughs> Okay, so I hope somebody took something from this video. Um, if you know this already, that's good. You are already on the train. If you do not know this and you just learned this today, that's good. Because you are on the train, walking aboard. You know, because this is very, very, very important information to know, especially if you are a relaxer. You know, a, a, a person who likes to relax their hair, pretty much. Okay? So, um, if you guys have any questions, comments, Whatever, comment below. Um, send me 
something in my inbox, send me a message, whatever, you know, and so um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, <laughs> and if you guys have any questions, because I know I was seeing a lot of stuff, a lot of terms and things like that, so if you have any questions about whatever, let me know, okay, I love you guys so much, you guys have an awesome, awesome day.